Bibles, if you would, to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians, and we'll be in the second chapter of this short letter this evening. While you turn there, let me mention, it's family here tonight, so let's have a little family talk. Mention a couple of things that we can do uh, to be effective and uh, in our song service. Now, I'm going to refer to our friend sitting next to Tony this evening and uh, talk to you about our song service. Uh, he's got an excellent singing voice, and he doesn't know songs, and he's really good at imitation. And uh, he he is a real blessing, and, and he's fun. And I like to hear him sing, but I don't want to hear him sing like a lady because it makes me laugh. Men, if you would just collar him before the service and make sure that he sits by a man and sing in his ear, it'll help him learn how to sing. He imitates everything, and he's, he's excellent at it. I enjoy a good laugh every now and again, but folks, our service is a worship service, and so we don't want to be silly all the time, and uh, we don't want to be a distraction to folks that would be lost, and so I, I greatly enjoy it. I think it's fun. Uh, it's, it's fine after the services uh, to teach any kind of silly songs or whatever else, but if we're all paying attention uh, to Him, then we're not singing to the Lord, and so for that reason, I think it's important uh, that we rein it in a little bit, and so... Enjoy yourselves. I, I do. Brother, uh, he, he is a dear brother, and I'll tell you something. I think he's probably our favorite person. Is to, you want to get favorite people, he's one of me. He's a delight. He brings joy into a room when he enters it. Help him, though, while, and during our song service so that he wouldn't be a distraction. So if you would do that, and that's, man, that's your responsibility. So um, it'll be, I can't do it. You'll have to. Okay. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Everybody understand the spirit in which I said that? Okay, good. All right, First Thessalonians chapter 2. We'll begin reading in verse 2. And uh, I want to really just read down uh, to verse 9. And we'll try to cover a, a large portion of this passage of Scripture. And folks, this, uh, this ought to be an encouragement to you this evening. I think it will be. So... Uh, Verse 1, chapter 2. For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. But even after we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as you know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel... Even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time used we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, 
when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being des affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. I want to preach to you this evening a message about ministry. A message about ministry or ministering. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's ask for His help this evening as we go to the Scripture. Our gracious Heavenly Father, it's our desire tonight that You would meet with us. And Lord, we don't want to work in man's strength this evening. We don't need to hear something that is from a person. But Father, we need to hear something that is from You. And Lord, we ask that this evening that Your Word would speak to our hearts. God, I do ask this evening for the privilege of conviction. And Lord, I ask that the message this evening would challenge us. Lord, I think that this evening and one of our needs is encouragement. And I ask that you would help us to be encouraged to serve you. And we ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, last week we looked at what the gospel does to us. What the gospel of Jesus Christ accomplishes in our life. And of course, we, we went over some introductory material as we always do when we begin a book. The letter to the Thessalonians was written to the church at Thessalonica. It was written shortly after the Apostle Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus had been in Philippi. And uh, I, I'm sorry, no, it was, it was written after they'd been with them in Thessalonica. The context this evening is that he mentions what had happened before he came to Thessalonica. And uh, the letter was written as an encourager, as an encouragement. There were several, uh, several things that were addressed specifically. But the beginning of the, of the letter to the church at Thessalonica talked about what God's power does. And, it, and the Apostle Paul, in writing this letter, reminds them of the effect of the gospel in their lives. Uh, he had said in verse 5 of chapter 1, he said, For our gospel came not in word only, but he said, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes. And so he said, it wasn't a weak and powerless gospel. And friends, I have to say to you, I, I'm glad that we don't function religiously as believers in Jesus Christ. I'm glad that it's not simply an organization or an option or a way to religion. I'm glad that the gospel of Jesus Christ is a gospel with power. I don't know about you, but when I got saved, I got saved at four years old, God changed my life. And I'm telling you, today my life is different because of the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a religious person. You know, I'll be out on door to door with some of you folks sometimes, and people will say, I'm not interested in religion. And my response is, I'm not either. Matter of fact, I don't like religion. I, it, it, it's bothersome to me when people uh, try to get spiritual without God if you know what I mean. And there's a lot of spirituality out there, a lot of mysticism and a lot of spooky stuff and a lot of things that just aren't real. And I'm just telling you that the gospel of Jesus Christ isn't like that. It's not about join the church and do this thing and do that thing and then you'll have worked your way into a position. And there's, there's never any assurance in any of that, by the way. Uh, you know, no person that is religious has assurance of their salvation. Well, they, of course, don't have salvation if they're trying to work their way to heaven. But those people don't have what the Scripture is referring to that happened at Thessalonica. The Apostle Paul reminds them of what happened when he came and preached the gospel at Thessalonica. And he said it was in much power and in demonstration. Uh, and, and what would that power have been? It would have been in the power of changed lives. It would have been in, in the power of individuals having spiritual victory. And friend, I want to say to you that the gospel of Jesus Christ is full of power and it has the ability to change lives. Not change yours and it will change the lives of folks around you. Now, the, and then last week we looked at uh, how that it was, uh, they, that the church at Thessalonica had reproduced what the apostles came. Now this is neat and pay attention to this. I want to review this again. I've been meditating on this all week long. I've just been amazed. If you've talked to me at all this week, uh, you've probably heard me just musing about this because it's been on my mind all week and that is what the Apostle Paul said in verse uh, 8 of chapter 1. He said, for from you, he's talking about how that they became followers of the apostles and, and full of flesh and they began to preach the gospel and their faith, the Bible said in verse 8, for from you sound out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to Godward is spread abroad. 
So here's Paul, a worldwide traveler, and everywhere he goes, he meets...